Whoa, 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 whoa. What's up, everybody? Yeah, welcome to the Mike Dolce Show. Boy, oh boy, today we got a fun topic, weight cutting. Really, my top five weight cutting tips, but I'm speaking to the noobs. And let me tell you, if you are not a world-class athlete, even if you are a world-class athlete, I'm going to tell you something, you're probably a noob. So I don't care if you hold the UFC, whatever weight, world title. If you've competed in 100 or more amateur wrestling matches, most likely you are a noob. I'm going to give five tips that everybody can and should be using to approach weight cutting. I will turn this into a bit of a series that you should also make sure you subscribe to this channel right now. Click that subscribe button right now because we got fire content coming your way. I just recorded an amazing two-hour interview with Alan Aragon, the author of the new Flexible Dieting Textbook Manual, Research Manual. It's awesome. Amazing conversation. We set the fitness and nutrition industry on fire. Like we name names, we talk smack, we get after it in this. So look for that coming soon. But today I want to talk about weight cutting and share these five tips on weight cutting with you. If you and if you have any questions, please leave them um, below. Oh, wife and mama, love your book. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. I appreciate that. Thank you for being here. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them. But let me now share with you my five tips. For weight cutting. Number one, the first tip, if you're thinking about weight cutting, if you're getting ready to cut weight, if you're talking about cutting weight, if your sport requires you to cut weight, rule number one is don't be fat. Don't be fat. That's rule number one, because if you are carrying an excessive amount of non-functional body mass, via subcutaneous or visceral body fat, you are being thrust into an unnatural weight class much higher than you currently are. What does this mean? If you are at 20% body fat, let's say you're 200 pounds at 20% body fat, that means you're carrying 40 pounds of body fat. If you, you will be competing likely against athletes that are 200 pounds at 10% body fat, which means you should be competing against 160 pound lean mass individuals, but instead you will be competing against 180 pound lean mass individuals. Yikes. That is a huge disadvantage. The sport of boxing in the lighter weights. They go up a weight class every three pounds in the lowest weights. Three to five pounds is a completely different weight class because that additional weight has a dramatic impact on sports performance and person-to-person -person competition. So now rule number one is don't be fat. Let's get you lean and healthy. Let's get you down to a very healthy athletic body mass. Rule number two, part of rule number one, choose the correct weight class. I have athletes that come to me all the time. will say they weigh 200 pounds and they want to compete at 155 pounds. I say, why? They say, well, I think I'll do really good there. Okay, so you need to lose 45 pounds between you right now and where you want to compete at. And then you assume you will be able to like stand up, let alone compete in an athletic activity. Are you serious? So choose the right weight class. If you're 200 pounds, well, you might want to start competing at weight classes closer to your natural body weight than having to go through the rigorous extremes necessary to make these inordinately, inordinately low weight classes. Choose the right weight class. And there's a very easy way to figure that out. It's your simple body mass minus 4% dehydration. So let's say you're 200 pounds at 10% body fat. I would say, hey, all right, you 200 pounds, 10% body fat. I will take 4% off that. That's about eight pounds or so of water dehydration. That means you at 200 pounds, 
you know, you could safely be around 192 pounds. Well, the closest weight class to you is, is 186, middleweight. Well, let's try and shave off a couple pounds of body fat over the course of your training camp. So then we can safely get you to that 186 pound weight class to be fully healthy and functional. That's a very simple and easy way to do it. Your current body weight or your, your body weight at approximately 10% body fat with a 4% level of managed dehydration is a place to start the consideration. By the way, this is not medical advice. This is for entertainment purposes only. My, my third tip, don't undereat. My third tip for weight cutting for the noobs is do not undereat. Don't eat less food than you need to survive, let alone to survive and expend the necessary energy to train for your sport and recover from, from the hard training and repair the damage done from the hard training. If you are chronically under eating, you are tearing your body down. You are getting sicker and less athletic. Your level of performance will continuously drop. Your immunity will continuously drop. Your level of damage will continuously increase. And in a short period of time, you will be a shadow of yourself, likely sick and injured. Do not under eat during your training camp. If you must resort to extreme caloric deprivation, you are, you have chosen the wrong weight class or you did not give yourself enough time to bring your off season weight down to a healthy baseline to make the weight class that is appropriate for you. Number four, water is your friend. You will see so many boxers wearing plastic sauna suits and hoodies on in the boxing gym three weeks before their fight. I got to get the weight off. I got to get the weight off. As soon as you take a sip of water, that weight will come right back on. Silly boxer. Boxers do this much more than the wrestlers and the MMA fighters because men, much of the MMA world is influenced by the wrestling community thankfully not so much the boxing community boxers are amongst the worst weight cutters wrestlers being amongst the best but still noobs <laughs> still noobs well using a lot of the old school methodology of their their coaches 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 who taught them from the the, the 40s to the 60s to the 80s to the to the aughts to, to today so it's bad information being passed down because, quote, it worked for us when we were real men. Well, science has evolved dramatically. Just simply look at this computer on my desk in my pocket, right? So science and technology evolves. The, the science behind weight cutting has dramatically improved in the last five years, let alone the last 50 years. So water is your friend and typically more water is more beneficial to your water reduction. What does this mean? Well, we talk here, this is a little bonus piece. We talk about the reverse pyramid during peak week in that as you get closer to your weigh in the last three to five days before weigh-ins, you want to start drinking more water, not less water. The common thought is if you super hydrate on Monday, at three gallons, Tuesday, two gallons, Wednesday, one gallon, Thursday, zero gallons, Friday's weigh-in. That is the most common water pyramid in all of combat sports, specifically in MMA, because the amateur wrestlers compete more often. They don't have a full week to do it. MMA, this is the most common, and it is by far the worst, because when you had taken three gallons of water on Monday, you only take in two gallons on Tuesday. By Tuesday, you are dehydrated. You're dehydrated come Tuesday. By Wednesday, you're suffering the ill effects of dehydration. Thursday, your body starts shutting down. Friday, you likely don't make weight. You stop sweating in a 180-degree sauna, and you are shipped to the hospital like many of George Lockhart's unfortunate athletes. Completely, completely destroy their body with this inane, archaic, ineffective form of water loading and depletion. Water's your friend. We want to be drinking water all the way up to the scale. And in fact, we want to be drinking more water each day while not dramatically reducing our sodium during peak week. So your body can retain and hold on to that water and use it in a beneficial manner. 
Number five, and there's so, I mean, there's so many. I, I could have 50 tips. And, and if you don't know, we actually have a book called Three Weeks to Shredded for anyone who's interested. Three Weeks to Shredded. This is the weight cutting manual that every pro athlete damn near uses. It is a multi number one bestseller for years. You can go to amazon.com, dolcedietshop.com, even on your Kindle or your Nook. Pick it up. I try and give so much free advice here. That book is there for anyone who wants more information. We even have an online platform walking you through the entire weight cut automated at thedolcediet.com. You can click that link below for three weeks to shred it. It is freaking phenomenal for anyone who wants to experience it, go through the right way. We have that information there. So number five is how to rehydrate or rehydration properly. Many athletes will crash cut. They'll, they'll skip my one through four tips. They'll crash cut. They'll make weight. And they will not adequately rehydrate. They haven't even thought of their rehydration. And in fact, what do they do? They bring a few quarts of Pedialyte, a few liters of Gatorade, and they start sucking those things down with whatever food they can get their hands on. They're grabbing deli sandwiches and little bags of potato chips. They're going to the Olive Garden for all-you-can-eat breadsticks and pasta with marinara sauce. And what happens? Within three hours of stepping on the scale, they are in the bathrooms, vomiting and having diarrhea, further dehydrating themselves because they were not adequately rehydrated. Their body cannot tolerate these foreign foods being dumped into the very sensitive digestive system. That food is being pushed out with any semblance of water that the body was trying to grab onto to hold, to absorb. That was completely eradicated and further reducing the athlete's ability to hydrate properly because now there is a serious dysfunction in the digestive environment. I've seen so many weight cuts completely blown, fights lost at the highest level due to poor rehydration strategies. Three weeks to shredded. We break down our three week or our rehydration system. We have a very special rehydration drink that we use. We make it homemade. It is, it's what Gatorade wishes it was. That is our electrolyte solution that all our athletes use. It's even a great intra workout. We have our athletes who are drinking this solution during their training as they are sweating. They're replenishing the proper electrolytes along with the water during this. So my five tips for the weight cutting noob, don't be fat, choose the right weight class, do not under eat, water is your friend and rehydrate properly. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below this video. Subscribe to this video if you have not, give us a thumbs up, this content deserves it. Also, check out our new sponsor, Cassandrinos Olive Oil, 100% organic. Olive oil, the most pristine olive oil you can ever imagine, not that chemical crap garbage that's sitting on the shelves for a year in your local local grocery store. Click the link below. I never, ever, 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 ever endorse consumables. Cassandrino's extra virgin olive oil, I endorse 100%. In fact, I actually have it here on my chicken, broccoli, and cauliflower out of the air fryer with the Cassandrinos nutty flavored, delicious olive oil, so pristine, making sure I am, I am getting my essential fats in that very lean meal right there. It is delicious, easy um, to consume, and you get a 25% discount with the Dolce code. So click the link below to learn more. The Cassandrinos website has a great educational piece to it. Learn more. Educate yourself. Learn more why Cassandrinos extra virgin olive oil is the industry leader, why they stand out and are so different from anybody, everybody else, and why we endorse them here inside of our very, very pristine nutritional system. Um, quick little questions. Lauren! What's up, Lauren? Good to see you. Got my water up thanks to you. Boom. Lauren, that makes me happy to hear. Good for you. Keep it up. Keep crushing it. Stay on task. Stay on track. Isaac! F you, Isaac! Isaac. That means effing unbelievable content. By the way, for anyone who's like, why are people cursing at Dolce? They're not. That is a insider uh, little joke there. Current schedule allows for fasted lists and lifting in the morning before work for maximum muscle growth. 
Should I eat a breakfast bowl before I lift? Nope. Smaller stack, maybe. Gym has noob classes in the evening. I understand completely. All right. So you only have time to train in the morning before work. You can do your list and lift. What should you do? Here's what I would do in your search situation. Lauren. I would wake up, I would hydrate with 16 to 32 ounces of room temperature water with sea salt or iodized table salt sprinkled in and a little bit of fresh lemon or lime juice, citric acid to hydrate your body. From there, on my way to the gym, I would likely eat a piece of fruit or drink a cold pressed beet juice to get sugar into your veins to support you during your resistance training, trying to make gains, right? That would be my strongest suggestion. During your training session, I would suggest drinking 15 to 30 grams of a whey protein isolate, no other ingredient mixed in water for the efficient digestibility to get those amino acids into your bloodstream. As your body is now training, you need those amino acids being thrust into the muscle. I would then finish my resistance training. I would walk right onto the treadmill or pre-core or Stairmaster, whatever you do, your low intensity, steady state cardiovascular activity. And I would keep it to 10 to 30 minutes maximum, likely 15 to 20 minutes post resistance training. Will it be ideal as as you've squeezed out that circulating blood sugar from the cold pressed beet juice and the stored glycogen? Now you can add a little bit of fat oxidation through the low intensity cardio post exercise. I would go home, bang, then it is breakfast bowl time. It is time to start feeding your body properly with your healthful whole food meals continuing on throughout the day. How about that, Lauren? That was, that is, that's exactly what I would do. And that's what I know to be the most ideal protocol given someone who wants to build muscle, maintain or lose body fat, right? You want to get leaner, bigger, stronger, rounder, shapelier, more athletic and healthier all at the same time. That is exactly what I would do in that circumstance. Keith, says thanks for the content thank you for being here thank you for subscribing to the channel by the way that's all we ask and bang bang giving the video a thumbs up for the algorithm um that's why you're the best awesome lauren i appreciate you thank you for being here and for being such an awesome member of our community you are great Uh, All right, guys and gals, I'm going to keep this under 20 minutes. Let me jump off now. Feel free to share this video with any of your friends in the weight cutting world. I'm going to build a series on this uh, over the next few weeks, and I'm going to give more and more tips that are, because this is kind of general but important, and slowly but surely I will build this um, into something much more evergreen for you. Boom, I appreciate that, um, 4T. Smith says, is the three weeks to shred it good for postpartum moms? My wife is having a hard time losing weight. Do you have to work out three times a day to lose weight? No. In fact, Smith, you don't have to work out at all at first. Although we strongly suggest activity, which then turns into exercise, which then turns into a training program, right? Movement is great, but movement with direction is better. And that's what we will get to. The three weeks to shredded program is the most successful, healthy weight loss program we've ever seen as proven 100% successful for over 20 years by the world's greatest athletes. Just a few of them are behind me whose names and faces and physiques you absolutely know. The performances you've seen as the main event on pay-per-view for hundreds of millions of people around the world to watch fueled by the exact system we're sharing with the three weeks to shredded program. Now, is it right for postpartum moms? I would say, well, how far postpartum that matters. Is it like in the hospital baby just, you know, was born? Well, maybe not exactly, exactly. But in a short period of time thereafter, I would say it was something you should definitely consider. Of course, speak with your doctor, have her speak with her doctor prior to starting. But don't say, hey, doc, I want to follow this three weeks to shred it program. The doctor said like, no, say, hey, doc, look at this amazing whole food based recipe program. I'd like to try. The doctor will look at the program. Oh, here's one of the books right now. And say, what day? I don't even know what day this is um, in the plan. Oh, breakfast. 
quarter cup of oats, tea table, two tablespoons of chia seeds, three tablespoons of hemp seeds, one half cup of raisins, one full cup of mixed berries, two tablespoons of almond butter, a dash of cinnamon, and a quarter teaspoon of pink Himalayan sea salt. Interesting. Also, a cup of green tea and optional coffee should she want it. That's not so bad. A little post-workout snack, 20 grams of a protein. You can have a whole food source or a whey protein isolate and a four-ounce cup of applesauce. That's pretty delicious. Uh, meal number three, we would call it, would be two whole eggs, two handfuls of spinach, a quarter red pepper, half green pepper, quarter red onion, quarter tomato, one tablespoon of avocado oil, and a pinch of pink Himalayan sea salt, plus three pieces of turkey bacon and a whole apple. I could go on and on. There's three more meals here. I would highly doubt her doctor would say, oh, that's bad. Don't eat all those delicious, awesome, healthy, clean, amazing foods. So hopefully, I mean, I'm, I'm being a little fun here, but hopefully you see exactly what I'm talking about. That, that is, I just opened the book and picked one random meal from run, one random day in three weeks to shred it. And I just read you a few of the, the recipes and ingredients. Three Weeks to Shredded is the most successful weight loss program in combat sports. This is the book, number one bestseller. You can click the link below, which we have a completely personalized online membership experience, which I strongly suggest. Every meal, every recipe, every ingredient is personalized to the user. It's phenomenal. I think we even have a little discount down there for you if you want it. So Smith, brother. Uh, let me thank you so much. You are amazing. Brother, thank you. I have two little babies at home. My wife went through two pregnancies back to back. My, my kids are 22 months apart, right? So I understand. I said, I'm her corner man. I cornered her through the entire process. We actually wrote a baby book detailing the entire process, exactly how she ate. We haven't released it yet due to publication dates and timing and a lot of the drafts and a little like the business side, the behind the scenes stuff of it. We will release it soon because it's evergreen content. So I just share that as a dad, but also as a weight loss expert, certainly consider it my friend and congrats by the way, on the, the beautiful baby. Um, Keith says my nephew will be wrestling at Fargo this month. He's 160 at night and has to be 52 for Fargo. Any suggestions to manage weight? I know, because I'm working with Anthony Knox, who's getting ready for Fargo also. Weigh-ins are July 12th, right? So Knox, my guy, Anthony Knox, he won Fargo last year at 106. Now he's coming back at 120 and cutting weight for it. We put on some serious, healthy, functional, lean muscle tissue on this young man. So Keith, hopefully, man, hopefully we all run into each other as, as we're down there at Fargo. Um, so he's 160 right now. He's got to weigh 152 in about a week. Any suggestions to manage and weight cut or links of past videos should I watch of yours? Thanks, brother. That's a whole deep dive. I'd say go back and listen to this again, specifically the point of hydration, proper hydration going into it. Cut out all essentials. So he's wrestling in Fargo, which means he's a youngster. Right. He's he's a kid with all the great respect that goes to that. This is a, a scholastic tournament. This is not for grown ass men. So he's a kid. Don't let him do kid stuff. Wrestlers are not children. Wrestlers do not eat like children. Wrestlers do not eat like their buddies. It is a different breed. When you choose to be a wrestler, you are choosing the strong road. That is challenging. That is difficult. That is saying no. That is delaying gratification. That is not starving yourself. That is not skipping meals. That is not being a knucklehead. That is fueling your body for performance period the end. That is him drinking only water, fresh brew teas, or black coffee period the end. No smoothies, no sports drinks, no aids, no sodas, no diet whatevers. Water, fresh brew tea, or black coffee if that's allowed and tolerated. He's eating only high net nutrient, helpful whole foods, period, the end. Enough that he needs to fuel him for training and sustain his muscle tissue, but not so much that it spills over and stores. Now, he's seven days out, so he's just about into that peaking zone. What I would tell him to do is start practicing the water cut. How do you do that? Again, this is not medical advice. I'm not telling him to do that. But in general, here's what we have seen very effective. Weigh-ins are a week away. So what I would do is I would say, hey, you're not cutting in the sauna. You're not riding the bike. You're not doing the plastics things. You are going to be on weight the night before so we can re-hydrate you going into the morning. 
Simple, soft, warm bath. Simple, soft, warm bath. Tonight. Tomorrow night. Every night. Just getting used to laying in a nice warm bath. Minimum of 20 minutes of sweating. If it takes three to seven minutes to start sweating, then start the clock. 20 minutes of sweating. But I would have him drinking water the whole time he's in the tub sweating. We're purifying the system and we are teaching his body how to release stored water in a low stress environment, which is very important for athletes cutting weight. This is why I can do a whole thing on it. We actually run a, a seminar called the Mastering the Weight Cut Seminar. I'm going to have one here soon. So keep that in mind, everyone. Um, Kate, Keith, I, I think hopefully all this helps. Um, hopefully all this helps, uh, my man. Um, but I've gone quite long, and uh, I appreciate you guys all for being here. My phone's blowing up. Everyone's texting me and calling me. I appreciate you guys once again. Thanks for hanging out. And until next time.